Okay, so season 4 was 9 episodes long and it lasted a full 13 hours, which is huge. Before this, season 1, 2, and 3 were all around 7 hours long, so the extra 6 hours made a huge difference. But with season 4 being the biggest season yet, in some parts I couldn't help but feel like they had to rush things. And spoilers, duh, but they never showed us Eddie on a stretcher getting loaded into an ambulance. We never saw anyone but Dustin ever mourn his death, and he was such a big character this season. Maybe Netflix thought it was too long already and made them cut some stuff because because honestly, it felt like we also should have gotten to see Dimitri and Yuri make it back to the States, but nothing. And the Duffer Brothers just came out and said that season 5, the final season that's supposed to wrap up the entire show, will be shorter than season 4. But I think this can work. Season 4, we started in a Hawkins Lab flashback 4 years before season 1 took place, and then we went to California and started that storyline. And then we went back to Hawkins, current day, and started one there. And then Joyce got a package, which started the Hop in Russia storyline. And by the halfway point in the season, and there was four different locational storylines, each with their own mini storylines branching off from the big ones. In season five, they're not going to structure the show like this. The Duffer Brothers have already made it very clear that they want to go back to their season one roots, meaning just one main Hawkins storyline with their own little groups in Hawkins going off and doing their own things. And they said they're also done introducing new characters, which sounds good at face value, but they've already introduced so many new ones and grown their roster to such a large size that there's just as many mini storylines they could set up inside of Hawkins. Not to mention if they bring back any older characters, Eddie, Billy, Barb, Bob, with this being the final season and the stakes being higher than ever, I wouldn't put anything past them. So if this season is shorter than the last, what does that mean for the future of the show? Are they going to have enough time to explain all of our questions and wrap up the entire show? Personally, I was hoping for the same length, if not a little longer than season 4, and I have my reasons on which we're going to get into very soon. If you're new here, welcome to the channel, I'm Michael J. Surprisingly enough, Enough, only like 12% of the people watching right now are actually subscribed. Shout out to the 12%, I appreciate you so much, but if you're part of the 90% that's not subbed, what are you even doing? Go down and punch that subscribe button with your telekinesis powers like 11. It doesn't cost a thing, it's totally free and it really helps me out. We're trying to hit 500k by the end of the year and I want you to be with us when we get there. For all the people that are subscribed, I'm leaving a plate of fresh warm cookies in the comments. Go get them while they're hot because we have a lot to talk about. I've also been working with some really talented artists to make some cool cool Stranger Things wallpapers for you guys to hold us over until season 5. The first one is of Chrissy and Eddie at one of his concerts. I can't help but feel there's some what if multiverse out there where Chrissy and Eddie both survive and get together and she goes to all of his concerts. I've also got a really wholesome cute one of Hop and Joyce together that I love. I'm really happy with how these are turning out. Go over to my Twitter at It's Michael J if you want to use these as your wallpaper. I'll be posting more in the next few weeks so make sure you follow me there. Now like I was saying before, and I mentioned this in a previous video, but I can't help but be a little concerned for the runtime of season 5. The Duffer Brothers recently came out and said that they don't want it to be 13 hours like season 4, they're aiming for more like 10 hours or something. They think that it's going to be longer than season 1 because they just have so much to wrap up, but they don't think that it's going to be as long as season 4, and I can't help but feel like they needed more time with season 4's finale. I don't know if they intended to keep some stuff vague and leave us with even more open-ended questions than when we went into volume 2, but I'm worried we're not going to have time to carry out a full-fledged story, deal with everything that happened at the end of season 4, explain a time jump, answer all the questions they left us with, as well as actually defeat Vecna and give closure to this 5 season long story. And I get, yeah, it'll all be in one location this time, so everything will be somewhat contained, there'll be less outside of Hawkins storylines, but still, I don't think they'll have enough time for everything. It seems like there's so much. I mean, I do trust the Duffer Brothers, and I think they did an amazing job with seasons 1 through 4, but I mean, there's some of the biggest questions coming up that they need to address, and they're going into it with less time to do everything. I just have a hard time seeing how this is going to work. Not only do they have all of the stuff we previously mentioned, but they're also teasing that they want to give some more sideline characters the spotlight this season. Which is awesome, but it means a lot more setup and character development that they left out of the last few seasons, and I don't know if you've seen my last videos, but I literally made one for each of the characters with a huge theory about their contribution to the storyline and plot of season 5. And honestly, I don't see how any of that could happen with such a small runtime for this season without it feeling rushed. They also said they want to go back to a lot of things they did in season 1, going back to the original groupings and pairings they started out with, which honestly is the best piece of news yet. That means that we're going back to the classic roots, all the kids paired up together, Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan, 
and then Hopper and Joyce together. Honestly, I hope at the very least we get to see them finally have their long-awaited date at Enzo's they should have had two seasons ago. It's literally the one thing that kept Hopper sane during his time in Russia. They better not skip over that. But I mean, how could you have time to do anything that's not Vecna related now that there's a giant hole open through Hawkins? For all we know, Enzo's got swallowed up in the hole and they'll never get to have that date. Also, I'm so curious what they're going to do with the love triangle this season. No, not that one. Well, I guess that one too, but I meant Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan. In season three, they really helped set up Nancy and Jonathan into the couple the fans were all rooting for. And then for the biggest season ever, they just let their candle fizzle out because Jonathan doesn't want to go to the same college as Nancy. And then to top it all off, they bring Steve in, who still hasn't gotten over Nancy apparently, and gives us this way too wholesome dream about him having six kids with Nancy and going on family road trips together. I mean, he he already has six kids. What are you talking about, Steve? I just really don't know where they're going to have time for this love triangle in season five, with all the invasion of Hawkins going on. I feel like the easiest way to take care of this is have Jonathan get killed off in some horrific way that affects Will and his turn to the dark side or something. Go watch my last video. It will explain a lot. And then at the end, Nancy and Steve can finally be together since he's a changed and matured man since they last went out back in high school. Part of me feels like they're ready to kill off Steve finally, but I don't know how satisfying that would be. I think I'm most excited excited for the original group of boys and Eleven to be back together. I really hope they make it feel like season one, uncovering the mystery and this time figuring out how to defeat Vecna. Every season, they always get split up by something, either by a secret Russian base underneath Hawkins or by girls or by basketball games. There's always something. So I'm really hoping that this season we get to all see them on the same page for once. They also mentioned that season 5 will start off with everything moving really fast, characters already in action with a goal and a drive. They said that alone will take up a couple hours this season and that it'll help the season feel very different from the previous seasons, and while that's fine and all because we are already halfway into this finale, I really hope it doesn't feel too rushed. Like beginning of Doctor Strange 2 rushed. If you've seen that, then you know what I mean when I say it starts the movie like you missed the first hour. I really hope they don't make it feel like that, because they've also said that that they think they'll finally do a time jump to address all the actors aging twice as fast as the characters in the show. In season five without a time jump, the kids would be 16 years old and in real life, by the time they film this season, they'll be 20 years old. With older actors, it's usually not that big of a difference, but with young actors who are already hitting puberty, it's very noticeable. That being said, I think if they really wanted to for story's sake, they could get away with not doing a time jump, but since they want to do it, I just hope they do it justice. I feel like they introduce so many immediate threats that that they need to address and they can't skip over and that they'll need to do at least half an episode addressing just all the season 4 finale stuff before they do a time jump, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And they keep teasing us about the finale too. They said it's going to be like Return of the King that concluded Lord of the Rings trilogy, but since I still haven't seen that yet, I had to look it up. And apparently it's one of the movies with the most endings. You think it's going to end, and then psych, this has to happen. And then wait, also this, and then oops, closure for this too. And then let's wrap up this before we end too. And honestly, I'm not even mad. That's my biggest concern is that they won't have enough time to wrap up everything. So please take all the time you need. They joke that there might be eight endings and honestly, totally fine with me. Make sure you end your series off right, guys. They also said that when they pitched season five and the ending of the series to the Netflix execs, they actually cried. Yeah, for real. I've never heard of that before. I can't imagine what they have in store. Well, I actually do have a few ideas. I'll probably make a season five predictions video just to realistically guess at how they might wrap up all the loose ends. So look out for that. Oh wait, if it's up right now, just go watch it after this video. It's just that it sounded like their biggest reason for season four's super long runtime is because of Vecna. They needed more time to just set him up, establish who he is, what he does, and why he's a threat. With season five, all of that is already established, so they won't have to spend much time setting him up. Instead, hopefully they'll address some of the massive things that happened right before the end of season four, like the portals opening up, Eddie's death, and Henry's time at MK Ultra. I'm also really excited to see Will finally take the spotlight and finally play an important role to the story. I mean, this man's spotlight and a good haircut is so long overdue. I really hope they do him justice and let Will have the spotlight with L all season like he deserves. But before we get all excited and ahead of ourselves, I wanted to briefly mention my massive list of pretty big questions they left us with in season four, and then I'll let you tell me what you think on if 10 hours and eight episodes is enough time for 
for season 5, or if you think they're just going to breeze over everything and not even mention this stuff. Starting off is probably one of the few that they will 100% address, and that is what happened to Max. I made an entire video theorizing in depth what they could do with her in season 5. Definitely go watch that one too after this video, but there's no way they kept her around and barely alive just to kill her off again. They're obviously going to do something very big with her. I don't know if they're going to give her powers or use her body as a host for Vecna or what. But they did mention that Season 4 was their Empire Strikes Back and Season 5 will be their Return of the Jedi. For those of you that don't know, at the end of Empire, Han got frozen in carbonite, unable to move or speak, and with some of the biggest threats in the galaxy after him. And they just ended the movie like that. In Return of the Jedi, the adventurers band together, saved Han from carbonite, and came together to defeat the Empire once and for all. So it seems like Season 5 could end on a happy note with them getting Max back and defeating Vecna, but I feel like that alone will take up so much time. Also, so, have you seen my Eddie theory video? At the very least, I want to see the gang reacting to Eddie's death finally, or see that shot of them wheeling him away on a stretcher. But there's an even bigger theory that Eddie could be resurrected by Vecna and used as his general, or as a host for season 5 while his body's weak, kind of like what he did with Billy. Also, with Will taking the spotlight once again, this puts him right in the center of Vecna's bullseye. With Vecna being more damaged than ever before, this is the perfect time for him to search for a new host to use as a body. And who better? better than Will, who he already has a connection established with, plus he's already used him successfully as a host before, and now the stakes are even higher. Another big question they already said they're going to spend more time explaining is why the Upside Down is stuck in the past. Why hasn't a day gone by since the first time Will's gone missing? I'm telling you, I think Will is connected to the Upside Down way more than we think. The Duffer Brothers also confirmed that we're going to go back and spend some more time looking at Henry Creel's time at MK Ultra, which I couldn't be more excited about. I made a video on this too, and how I think Henry could have gotten his powers. Definitely go check that out. It's a really interesting theory. I want to see more MK Ultra, and since it doesn't sound like they want to make an MK Ultra spin-off show like I think they should, I am so excited to see more of it explored in season 5. Personally, I feel like it's one of the pocket storylines that has the most unexplored potential for more screen time. They've been setting up pretty hard the Vecna keeping all the people he takes in his head thing. I'm not sure if he's using all the people he's killed off to keep him alive and use their life force to sustain him in the upside down, or if he's just using them to grow stronger or even collect all the memories and abilities from everyone else. This has me so intrigued though and I really want to know more about it. I was also really excited to see the town of Hawkins react to the portals to hell opening up through the center of their town. Especially after all the last town meetings and cult scares. I was really excited to see how they took it and who they start pointing fingers at now. If they're going to try to blame this on the kids and the rest of the Hellfire Club that would be crazy. Add a whole new layer to season 5. But honestly they might just start losing their minds and start looting all the toilet paper. I want to see what happens. They've also got the love triangle to tie up. Yes, both of them. I figure those will each take quite a bit of screen time and we're only halfway through the list. We haven't even mentioned some of the biggest ones. This is a more minor one, but I wish we got to see whatever happened to Sam Owens tied up in the bunker and now captured by the military. I hope he's still alive somewhere. He always seems to disappear at the end of the seasons. I just hope they didn't kill him off off screen. I don't think they would do that, but still. One of the other things that I really wanted to see at the end of volume 2, but I feel like again, they just didn't have enough time to put it in was what happened to Vecna after he got Nancy'd in the face. I wanted to see him trying to crawl away from the Creel house, his sanctuary, his fortress of solitude, and I wanted to see a bunch of monsters, demogorgons, demobats, dogs, I wanted to see them all trying to drag away their master just disappearing into the woods, accepting his defeat, knowing that the kids bested him even though he still succeeded with his mission. Another thing that's been bugging me since season 3, and I think that we're not going to get an answer to, but they definitely hinted at an explanation a few times, is how the Russians were transporting things from the middle of America to Russia. Are they really secretly transporting everything by car to an airport, to another airport, all the way to a Russian airport? I feel like they have something more efficient than that. They already figured out how to capture and preserve the Demogorgons as well as capture the Mind Flare which, let's be honest, the Americans at Hawkins Lab are big struggling with even just a containment area for the portal itself. How on earth did the Russians transport all that? Did they have their own portal they were using or something bigger than just the trucks? I wish they explored the Russian side of things a bit more, the transportation side of things as well as them learning how to capture the monsters and their mess ups that they learned from. With how much farther ahead of the Americans they are, it almost makes me wonder if the Americans will have to ask the Russians for help to defeat Vecna in season 5. I don't think that's the case, but 
But I also think it would be weird if season 4, Hop and Joyce being rescued from the prison was the last we see of the Russians in this show. I don't think we'll see this either in season 5, but I also really wanted some closure to Dimitri and Yuri finally making it back to the States. The whole storyline just felt so unfinished for the sake of Hopper and Elle's reunion, which even that was subpar. And besides seeing the gang react to Eddie's death, I also want more of an answer on what Vecna uses the grandfather clock for, and if that's how he sees into the future, as well as if we're going to see Callie, or any of the other numbers return to help defeat Vecna in season 5. With the fans' initial reaction to Callie, I feel like it's a bit unlikely we'll ever see her again. But you never know. Let me know if you think they'll have time to answer all of these questions, as well as defeat Vecna and the Upside Down in season 5, with just 10 hours and 8 episodes. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, I will see you in the Discord. Peace.